Hi guys, uh, welcome back uh, to Salt and Light. Uh, in today's video, we're going to look at putting um, the uh, radius chines on. Now you've seen uh, the video on how I made these. Uh, so today we're going to show uh, of actually fitting them onto the hulls. Uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, seeing how all this happened. It was actually really quite a fun um, experience. I made up a, a platform uh, with stairs uh, to give me easy access uh, to putting these radius chines on. Yeah, and that was, that was just brilliant. It was like it made the job so much easier, so much more fun. Hope you enjoy uh, seeing how the radio ch ra blah, 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 blah. Hope you enjoy uh, seeing how the radius chines uh, went on. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Now that the side panels are on, uh, the fun begins uh, to start fitting all of the radius chines. And as with everything uh, to do with catamarines, you get to do uh, this multiple times. Uh, on the first row, uh, I actually um, started to nail each piece in as I was cutting them, uh, but that just took way too long. In the end, I just made a pencil line uh, as I went along and lined the pieces up uh, with my pencil marks. And as you can see from this uh, real-time clip, I was pretty slow um, to start off with, but I certainly got a lot quicker uh, as we went along. Yeah, so there ended up being um, about 60 pieces uh, per layer per side, so all up I had to cut uh, 480 pieces.
Yeah, once all the pieces are finally cut, uh, the fun uh, really began uh, when gluing uh, the pieces on. And during this process, it was really helpful having a, a few extra pairs of hands uh, just to mix resin and get the resin onto the pieces. Uh, really helpful. One of the things that was recommended to me is to make up some timber blocks, uh, which I did just by using um, some pieces of cedar, uh, some long strips, putting some packaging tape onto them, uh, drilling a hole through it for a screw, and then chopping them into little bits. Uh, then I was able to use them on the edges just to pull the edges flat. <laughs> and I can hear everyone going, oh, but you're putting holes in the bottom of your boat. Um, yeah, all of the screw holes got filled up uh, before we put the next layer on. To get the first layer done, it took me about a day and a half to do um, each side. Now, the old saying, practice makes perfect, well, as I went along, uh, after each side, I just got a little bit quicker each time. By the time I got to the second layer, I was able to get one whole side done in one day. So once the first layer is finished, uh, I fill all the screw holes with resin and give it a good sand and then I'm ready for the second layer. Uh, so everything gets a coat of uh, epoxy resin uh, and then the pieces also get uh, thickened epoxy applied to it. And as always it's great to have uh, Meg uh, come and help. Uh, she doesn't always have time to uh, be able to come uh, but today uh, it was a great day to have her there. So once the second layer is completely uh, dry, uh, we'll go through, remove all of the timber blocks, uh, fill all of the holes uh, using a syringe. Uh, we squeeze thickened epoxy into the screw holes. 
and then we give it a good sand off uh, just touching off any any high bits and then I'm ready for fairing I start the fairing process uh, by giving the surface a good coat of uh, resin and then I mix up uh, the 105 resin with a Q-Cell powder uh, to make my fairing compound. <laughs> and then of course uh, once the fairing compound is nice and dry uh, the sanding starts uh, so it actually took me about three weeks uh, of sanding and in reality I probably did go a little bit overboard on uh, applying the fairing compound uh, it was my first time to do anything like this but I'm really happy with the way um, the surface came up and to be honest I did struggle a little bit uh, with the uh, pattern maker side of me uh, coming out and wanting the surface to be absolutely perfect and uh, after three weeks of uh, fairing and sanding um, and chasing really really small imperfections I just had to call it quits and call it that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it I guess I could have spent maybe another month chasing tiny imperfections um, but I'm really happy with the way it's come up. And the next step in the process is to uh, get the whole thing uh, covered in three coats of epoxy. And I did this by uh, using a rubber squeegee. I uh, just found this the best way to apply uh, a nice thin layer of epoxy uh, to the surface. I was able to achieve um, three coats of epoxy um, doing it uh, wet on wet so I would apply uh, one coat uh, and then I'd go on one side and then I'd go to the other side and uh, apply a coat of epoxy on the other side and then I'll, by the time that was completed uh, the first side uh, was dry enough uh, for me to apply 
uh, the second coat. And I just kept repeating that whole process all day uh, until uh, I had three coats on. I always knew that this was going to be a long day. I started at 7am uh, applying the first coat and I finished uh, the last bit at quarter past midnight. And the time between coats uh, got a little bit longer uh, as we got uh, more coats on. The first coat uh, soaked into the plywood uh, quite a lot. Uh, second coat not so much and, uh, and so there needed to be a bit more of a gap between uh, the second and third coats. You can see here the transom is, uh, transoms are in and the bottom step in. We've got the uh, uh, three coats of epoxy onto uh, the bottom of the holes and uh, ready to uh, get sanded and get primer and paint. To prepare the uh, surface for paint, I just give it a really uh, light sand with some uh, 80 grit paper uh, just to give it a, uh, the surface uh, a bit of texture for the paint uh, to stick to. And you can really see how this platform uh, made this whole process uh, just so much easier. So after sanding I give it a wipe down and then a, uh, a really light wipe down with acetone uh, just to make sure the surface is completely clean and dust free. So I'm using uh, a paint uh, made by uh, Kanze Paints uh, here in Japan. Uh, this is designed for use uh, with epoxy and also for under the water line. You may be thinking, gee, you've missed a bit in the middle there. Uh, but that's where the keels are going to sit, uh, so I left them paint free. And you may be asking, well why haven't you put the keels on now? Uh, simple answer to that is uh, the door opening is just not high enough for me to be able to get the boat out with the keels on, so they'll have to go on uh, once I get it outside. And just giving it a light sand. Uh, between coats so I gave it two coats of primer and uh, just left it at that. Uh, I'll put the bottom coat on uh, once I put the uh, keels on uh, and then paint the whole bottom in one go.
Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you like uh, seeing uh, this type of build, uh, give us a like and a subscribe. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video.